Hi everyone, I'm Barnaby from Direct Electron. Our company offers three different types of direct detector for TEM, suitable for a range of materials and biological applications. Today, I'm going to be focusing on some of the unique features that we've built into our 4K by 4K DE16 detector that make it suitable for high frame rate applications. If you'd like any more information, please feel free to reach out to me by email, visit our website, or visit the website of Edge Scientific, our representatives in Canada. I'm going to start by describing the differences between traditional and direct TEM detectors, just for those who aren't already familiar. In a traditional TEM detector, like the one on the left, electrons from the beam are incident on a scintillator in which they're converted to photons. Those photons then travel through a fiber optic coupling to the sensor where they form an image. In contrast, the direct detector, like the one on the right, electrons from the beam are directly incident on a radiation hardened sensor where they form an image. When you remove the scintillator and the fiber optic coupling, you get a detector with better detective quantum efficiency, improved signal to noise, and improved sensitivity at low electron doses. Like most direct detectors, the DE16 is based on CMOS electronics, which allows it to support high frame rate applications, by which I mean applications where you want to run your camera at hundreds to thousands of frames per second. One example of a high frame rate application is in situ TEM, where you want to study the evolution of a specimen over time. This figure is from a paper by the Misaidov group at the National University of Singapore, who used a DE16 to image the rapid rotations of nanoparticles at 300 frames per second. Another key application is 4D STEM, where you want to record a convergent beam electron diffraction pattern at every pixel of a STEM scan to give you a data set with a wealth of information about the sample. And you typically want to record this data set at frame rates of 1,000 frames per second or above. For more information about the technique, I refer you to the article listed under the figure, which Direct Electron co-wrote with the Voiles Group from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Finally, there's electron energy loss spectroscopy. Direct Electron is partnering with CEOS, the company that's well known for building aberration correctors for TEM and who now also make uh, energy filters. The DE16 camera can be placed behind the CX energy filter, allowing you to perform energy filter TEM imaging and EELs on our camera. One of the features that we built into our camera, which is very useful at high frame rates, is the ability to switch between rolling and global shutter readout modes. Most other CMOS cameras available for TEM operate only in rolling shutter mode, in which every row of pixels on the camera is read out sequentially with each frame. A disadvantage of this is that it means that every row of pixels is also read out at a different point in time. So when you have fast moving objects moving across the field of view, you get distortion artifacts like those shown by the movie. In contrast with global shutter, each row of pixels is properly synchronized in terms of its readout. So the images you get represent just one snapshot in time. The global shutter is of course important if you're imaging very fast moving objects and you want to image those without distortions. It's also important in 4D stem and eels if you want to minimize the effect of distortions due to the motions of the probe across the camera. This table shows the different uh, readout speeds that the DE16 is able to achieve uh, under different conditions. The most important thing to note here is that like with any CMOS camera, the readout speed increases as you reduce the number of rows that you need to read out. This leads me to another unique feature of the DE16 called ACRA, which lets you record movies at faster readout speeds while preserving your field of view by selectively skipping the readout of rows from across the camera. For example, the movie on the left was recorded at a normal readout speed and a similar movie on the right was recorded using only a quarter of the rows from across the sensor with ACRA mode, thereby achieving a roughly four times faster readout speed with a simple in-painting algorithm used here to fill in the images in the movie. ACRA could be helpful where readout speed is crucial, like imaging fast moving particles where imaging all of the rows on the camera might not be necessary for identifying the particle's position and orientation. Uh, it might also be useful for imaging very beam sensitive specimens and of course where users may want to experiment with image reconstruction and compressed sensing techniques. With that, I'd like to thank everyone who gave me information to help put this presentation together. Thank you for listening.